slightly high in the south, and bear in mind these strong winds out in the channel. Let's hope things do look up for the weekends. Focusing on Saturday, the rain in the north will slowly move away. Elsewhere, it'll be a mix of sunshine and showers and bright and breezy. Come Sunday, well, hopefully most of us should see at least something of the sun, and rain will move eastwards, but how far east it gets really is a matter of timing. Do join me after news at 10. The news tonight on Channel Report, tempers run high as Jersey immigrants demand housing rights. A quarter of a million loaves later, Joey has a crust. And Paul's for Thought from Toby. Hello, good evening. The newly formed Jersey Rights Association called for the reintroduction of the right to earn housing qualifications at their first meeting last night. But they insisted they did not want to start a fight against Jersey residents. They only wanted to campaign with them for their housing rights. Well over a hundred people packed into Church House. Found a member of the association, Ron Backhouse, spoke about cramped and poor housing conditions and said he wanted to see the reintroduction of the right to earn housing qualifications, even if they had to be restricted to the private sector. He quoted past remarks from several states' members and the state's economic advisor, Colin Powell. Jersey is likely to need its immigrants in the next century, as it has done during this one. And the island is going to have to work harder at attracting the immigrants that it will come to depend on, unless people are suggesting that the island should go into a state of economic decline. Perhaps the state of Jersey ought to listen to its own advisor. But the issues prompted heated exchanges between local residents and supporters of the association. Housing conditions here are nothing like as bad as the inner cities of Great Britain, where there are people that sleep in cardboard boxes under the bridges. If you're going to relax a 10-year rule, you're going to make it far more difficult for Jersey people to get housing. And not only that, you're going to just ruin this island and make it like any inner city in England. Mr. Walton has got me to my feet. I've got housing qualifications. But I agree with your association, and I thank you wholeheartedly. The vociferous minority that run this island are like Mr. Walton. They're part of the problem here. I'm going to join you. I don't run it was clear at the meeting that many British immigrant workers didn't realise they had the right to vote in the island, and Mr Backhouse urged them all to go to Hustings meetings and use those votes in the forthcoming elections. What I would hope is that people will go along to these meetings and ask these people what are they going to do? How, how do they feel about us looking after Jersey's immigrants? Ask all the right questions, hopefully you will get some answers. Then you can formulate your own opinions as to who you vote for. Among those who spoke were Stuart Sivray, accusing the states of being incompetent. There are too many people demanding too, too few housing. And this is the crux of the matter, and it, it is that that has to be tackled. But only one politician attended last night's meeting. Well, I, I found them interesting. There's a lot of food for thought in what was said. Facts and figures were quoted which weren't correct. But other than that, uh, as the, the, the principles were sound, and um, I, I'm very pleased I came down and heard what people had to say. And more states members will be invited to another meeting of the Jersey Rights Association where they hope to start a fighting fund. The three men involved in the smash and grab raid on Rang's jewellers in Sark have each been fined £500. Philip Cradden, Gary Bradburn and Graham Bevan were all working in Sark when they burgled the shop on the Spring Bank holiday Monday. Bradburn and Bevan admitted smashing the shop window and Cradden helped hide the £6,500 worth of jewellery. The court heard that £1,000 worth was still missing. The three thought it may still be on Sark as they were drunk and confused about where some of the goods had been hidden. The three were placed on oath to leave the island and not return for three years. Bevan had previous convictions for petty theft and was also given a three-month suspended sentence. Two men who have denied possessing £20,000 worth of drugs with intent to supply are to be tried by Jersey's Royal Court. 
William Hillis and Peter Fogg, both from Birkenhead, were charged last month following a joint police and customs raid. This morning they were remanded in custody by Jersey's police court for three weeks pending transcripts and reports. A man sitting in his car with his girlfriend was punched twice in the face in an apparently unprovoked assault in Jersey last night. The incident happened at 9 o'clock near the Merton Hotel. The attacker also kicked in one of the car's tail lights. Police are looking for a white male in his early 20s. He's about 5 feet 7 inches tall and has brown hair. Last night he was with a blonde-haired girl who was wearing denim shorts. The Jersey Association of Local Charities last night donated over £61,000 at their annual general meeting. The money comes from last year's Christmas and summer bumper lottery draws. Jersey Cheshire Homes were given £21,000, the Women's Refuge and Jersey Wildlife Preservation Trust £10,000 each, and Channel Islands Air Search £5,000. And in Guernsey, the Society for Spastics and the Physically Handicapped were presented this afternoon with a cheque for £5,600 by the TSB Foundation for the Channel Islands. The cash will be used to pay for the redecoration of the Ron Short Centre for the Disabled at Beausajour. Jersey's bailiff, Sir Peter Krill, last night presented trophies to some of the boats which took part in the weekend special trip to San Marlo. The event was organised to commemorate the rescue of Allied troops and nurses stranded by the advancing German troops 50 years ago. 144 boats made the journey to St Marlo, which accounted for the large turnout at St Helier Yacht Club last night. Everyone will get a commemorative plaque. But last night, attention was focused on Ken Renoir, whose sailing boat, Arc-en-Ciel, won the evacuation cup, and Roy Deeming, skipper of Desiree, the only one of the original boats to make the return trip. Well, every dog might have its day, but not every dog has a book published by him. That's precisely what has happened to Tovey. But then, he does have the advantage of being owned by the writer, broadcaster, lay preacher and Jersey politician, Senator Betty Brooke. We're not hard at work at the word processor writing books, and for a dog with Queen Anne legs that's particularly tricky, Tovey gets up to the more usual canine pursuits of taking his owner for a walk. For those who don't recognize the breed, Tovey is a bolter. That is, he bolts after everything he sees, as you'll discover if you read his book. For a long time I've said I could write a book about you, and I think he despaired because I was much too busy, so he decided to write it himself in the end. I'm distracting him, I'm yes, sorry, I shouldn't have yes, done that. Yes, you are, it's the thing is, We, had, we yes. had a shot just then of his lovely Queen Anne legs. Yes, well, I think, seen, he, I think he's, he's, You refer to him as the dog with the Queen Anne legs, and they really are, aren't they? Absolutely genuine, ten to three. Look at that. Barely position five, is it? I think so, as well. Betty, who's the book going to appeal to, do you think? I would like to think it'll appeal to people of all ages. It'll certainly appeal to dog lovers. It's a little adult for children, I think, but nevertheless, children will like it. It's a sort of do dog lover's book. And, but people who don't love dogs will probably like it as well. It'll appeal to golfers, because he refers to golfers, yachtsmen. He has a trip to, to Sark. Certainly to people who frequent pubs, because he was a pub dog in Guernsey and came to Jersey in a state that was, could only be described as near alcoholic because he couldn't pass a pub. So the first day or two when he was out on his lead in St. Helier, I was dragged into more pubs than I can name. It was unexpected for everybody. Not, yes, not what we <laughs> expect from you. No, because as a well-known teetotaler, I remember Bernard Levin saying to me, I've met uh, journalists who are alcoholic and who have dogs. I've never met a journalist with an alcoholic dog. <laughs> So that was one of the, the better ones, I think. But he's got over that now. He's a very, because he goes to church on Sundays and sits in the pulpit. So he's a very reformed character, really, in that way. But not in the way of bolting. He still bolts. He is a free-range dog, which is why that's what he called his book, A Free-Range Dog. Tovey is confidently anticipating a bestseller with this one, so the specially signed first editions are collector's items. Expertly written, of course, there are also some rather good illustrations by Al Thomas. So far from living a dog's life, Toby seems destined for stardom. But he's not used to quite the excitement of this, you know. But I'm sure with the poor signings he's going to do around, and even going over to England to do a poor signing at Scruff's, a mongrel show, uh, I imagine he'll uh, get used to all this publicity. I think that means the interview's over. Tovey is obviously happy with his role in life. He finishes his book by writing, being a guard and companion has disadvantages as well as benefits. But I wouldn't change places with any dog in the land. 
not even with a corgi that you know where. Well, it's been raining dogs and cats and things all day. Let's find out if that's going to continue with Mark Lacornia. Good evening. Complex low pressure over and to the south of Ireland and its associated fronts gave us a miserable morning with around three-fifths of an inch of rain falling here at Jersey Airport. The cold front cleared at lunchtime for a brighter afternoon. The whole system is moving bodily east, so by midday tomorrow, turning now to that chart, the low centre is expected to be over the North Sea, whilst the front should have pushed east towards Scandinavia and Germany. Tonight there will be fair periods and squally showers, with a minimum of 11 degrees. The wind is southwest to west, strong to gale force, so naturally enough there will be rough sea conditions. The caption for tomorrow suggests we expect a continuation of fair periods and squally showers, the temperature reaching a maximum of 16 degrees. The strong to gale force westerly wind should decrease fresh or strong later in the day, but still maintaining a rough sea. Just to end, a warning to Jersey farmers, present conditions favour the development of blight. Tonight's picture by Jonathan Sylvester, who's eight and goes to St Mary's School. And finally, Orany Air Services today celebrated one of the most unusual anniversaries in aviation history, their 10th year of flying fresh French bread into the islands on a daily basis. To mark the occasion, Monsieur Joël Travers, the Cherbourg baker, who's been responsible for the shipment of nearly a quarter of a million French loaves to Guernsey over the 10 years, arrived armed with a model of the Trilander of Joey, made, of course, in bread. Bad weather prevented a celebratory French breakfast on the apron, and when it was discovered that Monsieur Travert didn't have a passport, the café and pain had to be enjoyed within the confines of the airport's immigration area. That's it, another shorty tonight because of England's game. We wish them luck. Good night. Remember Randall. Experience the sensation of a car built by an aircraft manufacturer. Saab. To arrange a test flight, call us. Gold has been discovered in La Grande Mer in the shape of this exclusive card. Only 200 islanders can own one and this limited edition gives access to our sport and leisure facilities all year round. For business or pleasure, it's also a solid gold opportunity to enjoy luxury holidays at home and abroad at very special rates. Ring this number for details. After words, silence, after thought, memory, after fire, ice, after time, peace, after dark, Tia Maria. Here's another great offer from the homemakers. We're offering 12 months interest-free credit on any JVC Hi-Fi. Look and listen to the new range of JVC MIDI systems available at the homemakers, Don Street, Jersey, Lowlands and Marketplace, Guernsey. Good evening. Well, there's no football tonight till 5 past 11 when we'll be taking a look at highlights of the day's action. In half an hour, we have a visit to Emmerdale, but first, home and away. <laughs> 